Hello everybody, what is up? Oh, you beautiful, beautiful people. My name is Lexi, and I'm here doing a little quick um, guide as to how the Claymore works in Battlefield 4. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you have figured it out already, but there are a couple things that I'm sure I could tell you that you hadn't really thought about before. Um, tips and tricks types of things. Uh, of course, the Claymore, it's, it's changed a bit from the old series. It now shoots out these tripwire hooks, and if either of them is triggered, the explosive is going to be triggered. This is, this currently, uh, on in the middle of the ground like this, is a bad placement because, well, who the hell is going to, you know, randomly walk over there without actually seeing the explosives or the tripwire hooks? So, you have to place it against a wall or something like this. Now it'll shoot out the tripwire hooks, and anyone triggering one of these is going to have a bad time. Uh, let's put a th couple of things in perspective. Um, the lethal distance of the Claymore is now about a car length. So, uh, one, two, three meters maybe about three meters uh, straight in front of it. Um, it has a little bit less of a lethal da range in the outskirts of the arc, if you're understanding what I'm saying here. Uh, let's try to demonstrate that. So, it shoots out and then it explodes in an arc, just like the explosive is formed. So, it shoots out that way and then out this way, like the, like the drip bar hooks is formed. But if you're, you know, randomly triggering this one at this distance, it's going to do a lot less damage if, unless, well, you know, as opposed to standing in the middle of it and, you know, getting the full force of the blast. Uh, that being said, uh, about three men, uh, about one, uh, three meters or a car length in an explosive lethal range, I've found. Uh, this is from just personal testing, I haven't looked it up or anything, but uh, let's show a couple of good placement areas. I see a lot of people doing really bad Claymore placements. Uh, so let me show you a couple that I have found to be very effective. This this one right here is a very effective one. Like so. Because this area of this room is very dark and they <coughs> most people have their head around this area, and when you come around here, it's already too late. Uh, they they look... Most people look a little bit down. Um, I, I am one of those, and that ensures that I don't get a lot of headshots, uh, which is probably, you know, a noob thing to do, but it doesn't change the fact that people do it. So, if you run up here and you see this tripper hook, it's already too late by the time you get through the first one. So you trigger it, and boom, it's, you're dead. You can also place it a little bit further down. No, that's not it. it. Yeah, the placement of the Claymore is kind of weird. So, if at first you don't succeed, just try, try again. That is what I've found. If you come up here, boom, you're dead. It's this this area, it, you know, doing this like all clinically and, you know, uh, in a test range, it, it changes things a little bit because you know, it, first of all, it's a little bit do uh, lighter here than it is in the actual game uh, model of this house. And uh, we know for a fact that there is a Claymore there, so we're looking for it. But most people will just randomly run up here and boom. By the time they see it, their brain is like, oh, fuck, boom. Yeah, it's too late by now. Another good placement I found on this specific house is this one. It hides the Claymore itself, and it also shoots out these tripwire hooks. Another thing that does that uh, ensures that this claymore placement is actually a pretty good one is because you can't really get up anywhere else. Also, you have to kind of trigger one of these things in order to shoot out the explosive. Now, unless you have any grenades, you're kind of screwed. Also, it's pretty hard to hit it with a grenade from this distance. I mean, you could probably try it, but you'd waste all your grenades. Also, you'd alert the entire house of your whereabouts during the process, in the process of that. So, very close placements and around very tight corners is a good tip to uh, 
that I'm that I'm giving you guys at this point. Now, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, as a recon, we also have the claymores now, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh, well, we had it in Bedford Four, I believe. No, oh, three. Sorry, but uh, there is with the with the new change to how your equipment slots are picked, uh, you can have some pretty interesting combinations of gear. Now I'm having the tugs and the claymore, and that allows me to do some pretty interesting stuff in terms of setting up traps. One thing I like to do um, whenever I'm camping in this house as a sniper or we're holding the point or something like that, is to go underneath here, set up a claymore like so, and then place the tugs somewhere in the area. This sets off a beeping sound and scans the entire room or the house as well as being protected and you know potentially pulling in unsuspecting or idiot people. So if they want to go out under here and they, they can clearly see that there's a claymore there but if they go here and try to shoot it, it it's gonna do some damage and alert the entire room uh, and by the time he's well in the range of shooting it, it's already been put on the minimap. He's already been put on the minimap from the tugs. So that's something I like to do. Uh, basically, you use the tugs as a, um, hey, get over here and have a look. It's gonna be fine. It's candy, free candy. Another little trick that you can do with the new gear picking. Uh, 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 what you call it? System is the combination of C4 and Claymores. Now this is very effective. Now there are a couple of things you can do in order to set up a quote-unquote obvious trap. And obvious traps, I'm going to show you now what they are. Um, with the nice new combination of C4 and Claymore. Um, this is actually from Call of Duty. I, I did this a lot of back in Modern Warfare 2, I believe. And now we can actually do it in uh, Battlefield as well. To a greater effect. So... What the hell's happened to that one? It's like sideways. No. Yeah, uh, Claymore placements are a little bit weird in some places. But usually they should place on the crosshairs. Now, something you can do in order to basically amplify this explosives, uh, explosive is to, uh, well, let's say, let's set up a obvious case here. This one. It's, it's very clearly an obvious placement and a lot of people are going to walk around it and just think, oh, no, that's a stupid placement. Well, yeah, but, uh... If they ever try to blow it up... Uh, yeah, claymores are a little bit weird these days. Oh, come on. You're gonna ruin my demonstration here? Yeah, you are. Okay, well, if this claymore was to blow up, it will trigger all of these C4 blocks. Let's, you know, just do it manually, I guess. Come on! Yes, I know these trigger, uh, or these bullets do trigger the C4 explosives. But if that was to happen, someone would walk around and, you know, shoot shoot it from the back, and they thought they would be safe. But you know, if you're smart about your placements, you can do some pretty interesting stuff in terms of chaining or explosives. So most people are only going to notice that one because. It, they won't have that blue dot noticing it or pointing it out. But anyways, if a guy comes up here and tries to shoot this one out, it's gonna blow him up because that explosive is a lot more powerful than your average claymore, like I said. Uh, also, if you come up from this area and you imagine the claymore's right there, uh, you're gonna just run to the side and trigger the tripwire hooks and be out of the blast radius, but that's not the case because, well, the C4 blows up all the way out to well, halfway into the fucking room. 
so it's a good thing to do. Uh, let's set up a prime example of how I would do it. Uh, something like this, and I guess something like this. Hide it a little bit behind there, and a little bit up there, and a little bit up there, I guess. So now, if someone was to come up here and see, oh, there's a claymore, it's a stupid placement. Ah, come on, can I not shoot it? Well, let's try to do this one. So, imagine I shoot it, and boom blows up the entire fucking room. And that's a clear and sound warning to anyone camping in this house. Now this is only this specific type of house, but uh, with C4 and Claymore place, um, uh, toys or placements, you can have some really interesting effects. Um, I can I'm going to show you a couple of other interesting placements that I found to be very effective. Um, on the other maps, so yeah, bear back. All right, so there are basically two types of buildings that I primarily run around in, and this is one of them, and the one on Lang Kang. No, uh, Pyrocell Storm is the other type. Uh, they are used several places in the game. So this type of building, uh, well, even if it doesn't have to be on Lang Kang Dam. Um, this type of building is going to be on several maps. Uh, same goes for the, the one on Paracel Storm. So, a couple of places that I've found works really well on this map is right here. It gives me a lot of kills. Uh, I don't know exactly why. I guess it's kind of hard to see when you're just running. See, most people, they look kind of down like this while running. And by the time they get up here, it's too late. Same thing. As far as the uh, can't get around corner before they can trigger it type of deal. I think this is going to trigger it. I'm not sure exactly how the hitbox on the cables uh, work. But they definitely have a larger hitbox than the actual cable themselves. Uh, another good place that I like to use is on the top of the stairs here. Because of the fact that it's so dark. So if you just line it up like this, you can hardly even see it from a distance when running up here. Well, it's a little bit easier from this distance. But anyways, you can also trigger it while coming out this way. Kind of blends in with the uh, the railings here. Anyways, so... Yeah. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Top of the stairs, round tight corners, against cluttered or dark backgrounds. I guess those goes as two points. Those are very good places to put them. For instance, this one here. It is a little bit easier to spot than on top of the stairs here. Because of the white background. But if there was a lot of clutter or bullet holes on the ground or on the, on the, uh, the floor in the background here. No, sorry, the wall in the background, it would be easier to spot. No, um, to hide. Um, let's set up a good example of how I would set up a um, chain explosive, in this case. So here's a good example of uh, a chain explosive I would like to do. Um, it's not been tested before, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work. So this one is going to... Go ahead and trigger, let's say, this one. And then that one is going to have a direct line of sight to, let's say, this one. That's not too intrusive. No, it's easy enough to see. And that one is going to have a direct line of sight to, let's say, this one. We have the additional explosive right here, so I'm going to hide a little bit. <laughs> so that's a good, decent chain explosive I would use in the game to uh, basically amplify and supersize the um, the claymores. Let's see. Yep. <laughs> that works. So that's a good example of that. <laughs> um, hope you all enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. That's all I have to share about Claymores for now. I've only recently started using Claymores and C4 in combination. Um, because
because usually I only play support and as a, as a support player I usually only run with the ammo box and something else because I hate running out of ammo. But for the recon the Claymore Z4 combo is really really awesome as you can see. Uh, I chose this building because I accidentally blew this one up prematurely. There's a huge hole in the wall there. <laughs> Uh, anyways, hope you all enjoyed this demonstration and uh, tips and tricks, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this or found this useful or something. But yeah, see you guys next time. Bye.